what's going on everybody it's eta prime back here again so yeah i bought a bunch of handhelds from timu and i wanted to see if they were any good now uh we've got three here but i also added some extra stuff to the cart little knickknacks and things like that and this is actually the first time i've ever ordered from the company i was uh actually wondering if i would really receive the products i've used aliexpress quite a bit in the past without any issues except for one where i was refunded but it did take a little while to get that money back and lo and behold, with Timu, the package actually showed up, and it didn't take that long. It was only about seven days, uh, and it showed up at my front doorstep. I'm not exactly sure if they have kind of a base of operations in the U.S. or not, but, you know, if it was shipped from China, that was some pretty quick shipping for what I have here. To tell you the truth, I'm not exactly sure what to expect with these handhelds, but the prices only range from $10 up to $18. And uh, like I mentioned, I did throw a couple extra little things in the cart. Nothing major. Basically, everything was under like 10 bucks that I purchased. Here's one of them. I believe this is the G5. We've got the G3. Game Box Power G3. Don't know exactly what that is. Got a little uh, Walkman Lego kit or off-brand Legos. And we've got the G7. And a couple extra little things here. Little wireless headphones for the kids. Couple $1 calculator watches. Actually excited about these. And... Um, for some reason, there's a bead kit in here. I do not remember ordering that, so... Yeah, I guess they sent that along for some reason. But what we're really here for are these handhelds, and first up, we've got the G5. This was right under $10. It was like $9.80-something cents. I wasn't expecting it to come with a little USB or micro USB controller, but uh, as you can see, we've got a really tiny controller here. The buttons seem like they really do work, but this is something I'll probably never use. So for $10, you get the uh, handheld console itself. We've got our micro USB charging cable, video and audio out, so we can connect this to a TV, and obviously that super tiny, really, really crappy controller. They do offer these in a few different colors. I think they have a blue, pink, and we've got the green here, and I can't get this screen protector off, so I have to use something else later on. But around back here, uh, we do have a replaceable battery. Not much else going on around here, but uh, up top, we've got our power switch, micro USB, and our 3.5 millimeter jack. I guess this is video and audio out. Plus, we've got a volume wheel over here on the side. Definitely feels really cheap, but again, it was under 10 bucks. Go ahead and power it up. And I'll tell you the truth, I ordered these at about 2 o'clock in the morning one night laying in bed. I didn't even think about these being kind of an all-in-one system, and it looks like with this one, we get the uh, 501. And we've definitely seen these in the past from cheaper consoles. Uh, basically, it's an NES on a chip, and we'll take one apart and take a look at it. But it does look like they might have 500 games here. Unfortunately, with a lot of these, and especially this one, we've got a lot of hacks, and there may be some doubles, possibly even triples on here. And with something like this, you can't add any extra games to it. I was actually under the impression that this would all be running from a micro SD card. I didn't even think about the fact they'd be using a system on the chip when I ordered this, but let's get into some gameplay here. Go with one of my favorite games, Adventure Island. And it looks like this is the Japanese version. But yeah, I mean, it's actually working. And it seems to be at original speed. Now, I play this game quite a bit. I've actually got the original version on an original NES. So I've got a feel for how this should perform. It doesn't seem slowed down. It doesn't seem sped up. And, you know, these system on a chips have come quite a long way in the last couple of years. Some of these systems do run the game a little faster. So uh, you'll hear that sound a little sped up and it just won't be quite the same. But this actually feels pretty decent. I'm just kind of amazed by how they're able to put something like this together, no matter how basic it is, and still make a profit on it, selling it under $10. That's pretty crazy. Now, I did see a few Mario games on here, like Mario 14. Let's go ahead and do Mario 9. And it's actually an Adventure Island hack with Mario. So this is Adventure Island 2, second game to the one we just tried out, but it's kind of Mario themed. Well, basically, I guess we just have Mario here as our main character. And I'm sure out of these 500 games they have on here, there's also a lot of other hacks that kind of do this with different games. But yeah, at 10 bucks, I could actually see somebody getting these as party favors for like a kid's birthday or something like that. Definitely not top of the line material here. The next one we're going to be taking a look at is the G7. And I actually do like the look of this one. 
I know we've got that rounded D-pad, but you know, I'm not trying to compete in any fighting games or anything like that. Micro USB and our audio video out. Oh, it's a lot thinner than I thought it was going to be. So got a little bit of a user manual there. Single speaker up front. D-pad doesn't feel great. I mean, obviously. Line out and micro USB on the bottom. Got a power button up top and our volume over on the left hand side. Again, trying to get the screen protector off didn't work out very well. Go ahead and power this one up. And again, we've got another system on a chip, but this time, this one supports Spanish. On the box, it didn't say how many games it had, but you know, judging by the G5 having 500, I think this one might have 700 games. And from the menu, it definitely looks like we've got some better stuff on this system. But we'll have to see how many games are on here. I'm sure more than half of them are definitely going to be hacks, but if we move all the way over to the left-hand side, 666. Ooh. Yeah, they could have added or taken away at least one of those games. But let's get into some gameplay here. Again, we've got a Japanese game. This is uh, Ninja Turtles. One of my favorites. And the D-pad is definitely not great. Would have been nice if they just had a regular D-pad on here. I would have even kind of settled for a separated D-pad on something like this. But uh, they went with this rounded version, which... Doesn't feel great for platformers for sure. Kind of having a hard time with it, uh, at least with this game. So we'll exit back to the menu. Every time we go back, we do have to choose the language. And we'll find something else real quick. We'll do RoboCop. So far with the G5 and the G7, these consoles aren't looking great. By the way, the G7 here was, I think, $16.18. Still really cheap, and I actually do like the design minus the D-pad, but let's go ahead and move over to the last one. The Game Box Power G3801. So I guess their naming convention kind of doesn't follow the same line across all of the handhelds they offer because uh, this has 800 games. And when I saw this in the picture on Timu, I actually thought that one of these was going to be a micro SD card. I think that's the reason I picked it up. And with this one, we also have that removable battery. Power switch down here on the bottom. Two language options, and like we saw on the box, it said 801. And yeah, I mean, we're basically going to get kind of the same thing across the board with all of these. The uh, G5, G7, and G3. Just the G3 has a few more games. But these can definitely rack up those doubles, you know, with different naming conventions, and especially a lot of different hacks of different games. But yeah, I mean, overall, the G5, the G7, and the G3 here are not great handhelds. I mean, obviously, screens aren't screens aren't great. We can't add more games. It's basically just an NES on a chip with a bunch of different random games preloaded on here. Prices aren't that bad for what we have, but I would still skip them. I mean, it's nothing special. I was hoping I could find a hidden gem or something like that. But unfortunately, with these three, there's just so many out there on the market right now. It's kind of hard to justify picking something like this up, even at like 16 bucks. But I still wanted to tear at least one of these down. And we're just going to go with the G3. Uh, basically, remove the battery. We've got these four Phillips head screws here. We can remove the back, and now the uh, main board itself is held in with two more Phillips head screws. Now we can pull the whole board out. That screen's going to come right out of the front. We've got our attached speaker. We can take this screen right out of here. And here it is. So we've got our speaker, our screen connector, and the system on a chip. Basically, this does everything that the NES does, plus it has built-in storage so they can put those games on here. And it doesn't need to be much at all for 800 games because they don't take up that much space in the first place. Final verdict here for these uh, handhelds from Timu. Definitely cheap. I didn't pay a lot for them. I wasn't expecting much, but yeah, I mean, this is something I would definitely stay away from. Unless you have kind of a use case scenario, giving them out as party favors, maybe uh, using it for travel, for the kids, something like that. I mean, some of these could come in handy, but you know, if you're looking for a good handheld console, I would definitely stay away from these on Timu. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. Moral of the story is don't order stuff from Timu at two in the morning. If you've got any questions, let me know down below. Like always, thanks for watching.